To those who say that the rich should pay more, I would reply that someone paying 17%, say, of $1 million is paying more than 17% of someone making $10,000. It's 100 times more. And I know this makes me a Nazi, even though Nazi means National Socialist, and I hate socialism. But I think the poor need to pay the same rate as well. Because today, half of the country pays no income tax at all. That's not fair. In fact, that's absurd. Even people getting welfare ought to have 17% deducted from those benefits so that when those people vote to raise taxes, it's coming out of their pockets too. We've played his videos on the show before. He's joined us remotely from uh, Toronto and Los Angeles, but today he is here in person. Bill Whittle speaking earlier today at the Manning Center Conference. Good to see you in person, hey, Bill. Brian, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. So you went before the Manning Conference, which is all about conservatism and uh, the conservative big tent. That's their theme this year. A and you told this group of Canadian conservatives that often look to the U.S. above what's going on and, you know, there's a real conservative movement. That you don't have one. No, we don't. Okay, explain this to some people that are going to be shocked. Well, there's a joke, you know, when I grew up in the film business, and, and a lot of times on a movie set, people work really, really hard, and the lower the budget, the more jobs they do, and the Teamsters just drive trucks, and they just sit there for the day and let everybody else work. So there's a joke that used to go around a movie set, is how, how tall is the average Teamster? No one knows. No one's ever seen one standing up before. So, <laughs> so the, you could, the, the same argument is what I made earlier today. How, how well is conservatism working in America? Nobody, nobody knows. No one's tried it. Uh, what, we, what we find we get down there is we get people who, who continually call themselves Republicans, but as time goes on, the Republicans become more and more and more democrat light, And they, they just become, well, we're for big government, but not quite as big, and we don't mind deficit spending, but not quite as much. And basically, they've taken away the choice of American conservatives. And I don't know what the actual number is, but certainly it's something like 30 million conservatives sat out this last election. They just didn't show up. They didn't have a choice. And, and, and just to be clear on the math, if anyone forgets, if 30 million conservative Americans had shown up and voted for Mitt Romney, yeah. um, he'd be president, not Obama. But they just didn't see... By 29 see, million. By 29 million. Yeah, they yeah. just didn't see the option there. No, there, is, there was no option. Uh, we, had, we had the man who invented Romney Care. And we had the man who invented Obamacare. And for conservatives in America, the end game of, of a socialist takeover of the country is controlling the health care system. Now, we know that Canadians have a different view of health care than we do. But basically, our position down there is, is that if, if they can control your health care, then they can control every part of, of your life. And then you really just are... At, well, it, at, that's what we're fighting here right. as we now see... Uh, members of parliament try and say, well, we need to control how much sodium is in prepared foods. Not, a, you know, not an awareness campaign that says, hey, eating too much sodium is bad for you. No, no, we have to force it out. Uh, we need to uh, have uh, warning labels on children's juice boxes. That's right. Not drink boxes, juice boxes, yeah. because, well, there's too much sugar in it. I mean, you, it's like Mayor Bloomberg spread across the country. Yeah, it's almost like certain people want to just enjoy telling you what to do. Yeah. But w back to the, the, just to basically say what we were presented with, the, the American people were presented with in November was the man who invented R Obamacare and the man who implemented Obamacare. Those were our choices. And uh, for conservatives in America, Look, I did my very level best for the final year prior to the election to convince conservatives to vote for Romney simply because the alternative is Armageddon. But many, many, many didn't buy that argument. And, I, and I'm not unsympathetic to their position. All right. It sounds like what happens with conservatives in America, or not conservatives, but the Republican Party in America, is the same as what happens with conservative parties here in Canada. They run saying they're conservative. They get a nomination. They run. They get in. And then they just try and manage this huge bureaucratic overbearing state and say, well, we're doing a better job than the other guys. But they're still running this huge overbearing uh, state that they used to rail against and yeah. say, we can't have this. This is going too far. And then they get in. What are you going to do about it? Well, we can't change things. No, no, can't have that. Uh, what's the answer? I mean, what, what, what's the average citizen to do? Because the, the problem is the same in both our countries. It is. And I think the problem fundamentally is, is that the kind of person who wants to become a politician is by nature the kind of person that is comfortable with spending other people's money instead of going out and making their own. Many businessmen transition to politics, but once they do, they become the kind of politicians that would have prevented their business from being started in the first place. I think the answer really is citizen legislators. That's certainly what our Constitution was designed for. Uh, with the idea that somebody would live in Washington, I don't think is really uh, 
40, 50 years. And John McCain has been a senator for I don't know how long. I know that Robert Byrd was a senator for 52 years. He was a senator longer than I'd been alive at the yeah. time. And, you know, when he went into the Senate, there was no color television. There was no Internet. There was no... There, he's supposed to represent the people. I think... I really do think that what we are trying to do with, with kind of grassroots conservatism in the United States now is to say, listen, we have to get an entire new crop of legislators, an entirely new crop, a new kind of legislator, the kind of legislator who not only can go and bring conservative ideas to Washington, but then after two years or four years at the most, if they're in the House, say, it's time to go home now. Okay, you, so have you, a, you have a job to do. You have a family and a job back home. You came, you did your two years. We should, if somebody wants the job, they shouldn't get it, Brian. And, <laughs> and, and if they look at, at serving in Congress as jury duty, like, I can't possibly afford to leave my family and my, and my business to go to Washington for two years. Those are the, exactly the kind of people we need to get. So you're not talking about um, uh, insane uh, citizen legislatures where they show up for one or two days a no, week. No, no. There's some state houses that do that. Uh, but yeah, the no. argument from my friend John Robson is, no, no, we're not having a part-time legislative branch when the uh, the bureaucracy is permanent and, and and as large as it is. You need to have somebody over, overlooking them. You're talking about the old citizen-soldier model. And you go, you fight, you go you home. You come home, exactly. We have our, our National Guard functions a lot like that down there where one weekend a year and two weeks of... Uh, one weekend a month and two weeks a year, individuals go and do service in the National Guard to stay trained up. I, I'm talking about people that have a life and have skill sets, they can balance a budget, they can, they can staff a fry station at McDonald's. Most of the people in Congress couldn't even do these simple things. They know how to add, they know how to subtract, they know that if you spend more money than you take in over time, sooner or later, that business is going to go out of business. They understand what money is. They, these are, I just want real world practical people. Wasn't it William F. Buckley who famously said, I'd rather be ruled by the first 435 names in the, um, in the, the Boston, Boston phone book, book yeah. than, than, than by the clowns that we have in the House of Representatives right now? I, I want to ask you about one more thing that Buckley said, because, and it relates to what we were talking about, the conservatives, they, they campaign on one thing, get in, and then they say they're better managers. It's on social issues, it's on all kinds of things. They campaign and they say, well, we can't have that, and then they get in, and they're defending the status quo. Because conservatives don't want change, but they don't want to change to go back. And Buckley said conservatives now have to become radicals because the state's become so big, you've got to dismantle something. I think that's an idea that, that has to be spread. No one, no one is out there preaching the virtue of conservatism. They're all, we've been so beaten up by the pop culture and so demonized by movies and television and, you know, Tea Party's called racist and they're, you know, and homophobic and all this other stuff. No one gets out there and preaches the virtues of conservatism in a way that young people understand it. But when you get right down to it, Brian, our political philosophy is get out of our face, step off, don't tell us what to do, you're not the boss of me, I don't need you to tell me how big my soft drinks are, I don't need you to tell me where I can drive at night or under what conditions, I don't need you to tell me what kind of car I need to have, just leave me alone and let me live my life. And when you preach the virtues of conservatism and the things like, if you spend more money than you take in, then you are going to be in trouble over the long term. When you do that, we win. When we preach philosophy and we talk about morality, we win. When we talk about policies and politics, we lose every time. All right, Bill Whittle. Uh, we thanks so much for coming Pleasure. in. Thanks for being at the Manning Conference. And if you go to Facebook, we will post some of Bill's new videos. He's got a whole new line, The Virtual President. You will love it. Go to Facebook, punch in my name or byline. You'll find it. More to come.